welcome back to the channel we have a new project on hand here we got a uh, 7 by 18 car trailer that I really like I've had this long time and this is a 2003 I didn't buy it new I think it was on Craigslist at the time and a few towns over and I said oh I gotta go get it the price was right but it looked nicer obviously but I use my equipment I sometimes abuse it and this seen better days I want me to show you what's going on here now this is 82 inches wide from the edge of the bed to the edge of the bed it's two inches tall on this lip here the flat part of the steel diamond plate is 14 feet and then it's an additional four feet for the beaver tail. And so I really like the length. I've had a diesel F250 on here. And I, I handled it just fine. Um, it's got tandem axle, which I replaced the new springs on it. I've got replacement wheels and tires that we took off. There's, there's Tiger. We took off the car trailer last year and installed new ones on, I'm sorry, on the enclosed trailer and put these on the car trailer. And these have a little bit of wear on them. The reason I took them off the enclosed is we're just starting to get some dry crack here. And that's probably from sun. So we'll be looking at new tires here shortly. And on that, I was able to go on eBay. Let me go over and show you. And I was able to get a wheel and tire combo for the price of four tires. I think the price was a little bit higher. And I think I put a bid in on it. And a couple days later, they said, sure. And Dawson painted them. Didn't do too bad of a job. There's a little bit overspray on the uh, tires. No big deal. These are carrier load stars. 205, 75, 15. I think they're four and a half inch center. Um... I put new brakes on it, I put new um, springs on it, the underneath of the of the trailer, it's a little rusty, there's no rust holes, it's a little rusty because we're in New York. Um, this is a classic official trailer of IHRA, um, it's a 7,000 pound, 2 and 5 sixteenths tongue, problem with the latch a little bit is this gets sticky now and then, probably lubrication will help. We had a little problem on one job. We parked the trailer and we had a load, a big load of uh, treated wood for a multi-story deck we were building. So this trailer was probably had 5,000 pounds of lumber on it, maybe. It's pretty full. The jack was down, tires are blocked. I went to hook up with a tractor because I had the tractor on site and I just tilted it up into the hook and it jumped the uh, firewood. And see, I always use chunks of firewood. It jumped over the firewood. The trailer took off on us. And it went about 20 feet and slammed into the dump trailer that was parked there. Which I'm really glad because then it didn't go down the neighbor's field or anything. But what happened is it bent this jack. You can see this jack is off this way quite a ways. Um, the brake system... This all works fine on it. I think I bought a new battery once. It's got a breakaway. Works fine. Cable's a little bit long. The, uh, the hooks, these all got bent up. I think you can buy replacements. I'm going to check on that because I like it when they work. I believe this is set up for a winch. I have a winch, but it's portable. I move it around, so I don't know if I should put like a uh, two inch receiver so I can slide it into it and then take it off I don't want a permanent winch on here because sometimes I put stuff up here that the winch would be in the way I went out of town and I bought 24 foot steel and it went from just about the front of the tongue I think right about here I bought some tube steel all the way to the back and hanging off the back with flags um, the delivery on the steel was going to be ridiculous they were um, I think I bought, for the dump trailer, I did some replacement, but I, I bought some 2x3s, 2x4s, and they were heavy. 
So I don't want that in the way. Um, this has really good tie downs. Just not enough of them. When I put the tractor on here, I put the backhoe on like it's on now. This works awesome because I can go corner to corner. All done. Really fast. Works great. The other day, Doss and I did a uh, too long project where we went and did two lawns, you know, for maintenance. One was way overgrown and uh, it took us a while and a lot of cleanup. So we took two riders and a push mower and ramps and things like that on the trailer. And we didn't have anywhere to tie down. So I put straps over the top and under and it just, it just looked weird. I'd like to be able to put more tie downs. Now ideally, the ones where you cut out, these are weld ons, the cut out and they sit down in the bed are nice because they, you know, they're flush. I don't really want to cut this bed up because it's in really nice shape. So I'm thinking putting some tie downs possibly that maybe come up off just a little bit so we can put a hook in it. And maybe the ones that, you know, would tilt and drop down, they might rattle going down the road. It'd be like this. Have them stick up when I want to hook on it. Let it drop down to the side when we don't. Um, let's see what else is going on here. It looks like that seal is leaking a little bit. I had greased that. Everything looked great. The brakes work awesome. They'll stop the truck. Um, this fender bounced off one day into the road. What these do, this is what he told me. The man told me when I purchased it is they used it to move a Corvette. And when they went to open the doors, it would hit the fender. So this design of trailer, you could undo these bungees, snap them down, and this whole fender tilts forward and then just slides off. And then you open your door and you're touching a rubber tire versus a steel a fender, you know. Um, but these fenders have seen better days. Plenty of rust holes. Right now, inspection's not going to care because it has fenders that protects, you know, cars from rocks. They wobble around. I put an additional bolt in the backside because when this comes down and snaps, it's just too sloppy for what I like. Um, the license plate is fine. I think I'm having a problem with that light bulb staying lit. You got to have a lit light bulb for your license plate. The, uh, this is the problem back here is our tail lights. This is a tilt. Now, I shouldn't say a tilt, but when I put the jack down and I move this around, is the bottom drags on the road. And it gets a lot of abuse back here. Um, the beaver tail drops down so much that it catches on the edge of the road, and it really does a number here. I want to fix that. Right now, all the lights are working, except this one. This, this whole light got busted apart. And the side marker fell out. It was actually lit dragging on the road. But I got to fix that. The other thing is we always walk around this, especially at the job site, and bang our shin on it. It sticks out there. I don't like it. Um, this has two ramps. And they're, if you can see that one there, one slides in the other. This one's separated. So you can use a, you know, almost a four footer or you can extend it out to almost eight feet for a lower car. And they get hit in here. And I made this little plate cover. It had a hinge cover and they were all banged up. So you can see this comes up and it's all bent. That we got to fix because the ramps don't fit in there very nicely. And they used to slide in and out easily. And then when you go down the road, especially in the winter months, you get road salt in there. And they kind of rusted to the frameworks. And so I beat them out, got them out of there. Now it's time to fix it. Um, the ramps have a hook on them. And they hook right over this bar. So I got to keep this bar here. But the bar's bent up too. I want to straighten that out. Um, what I thought about doing is keeping the center clearance lights, shortening this up, having it come around and weld on the outside, cut these light boxes off, move the lights up there, and put a light right over the license plate, and elevate it up a little, 
so that it mounts like right right here then it'll be protected I don't think I've ever bumped into this because I'm not you know in that position um, what else is going on here this side here this fender's worse I think this is the worst one so go down the road it looks like this and the reason is is that bracket broke off and I don't remember if we ever picked it up or not probably didn't know it fell off but it looked a lot like this one and it's probably a <coughs> excuse me a six by two and a half and it's a little over 12 inches long so I'm gonna have to probably make that and then the fender can mount on that and that'll keep it from tilting and this looks like it's tilted down so look at all the repairs we got the other thing is I'd like to look it over make sure there's no structural damage as far as rust underneath it and you can see the back of the light here this is pretty rough so I want to cut them right off in there the wires over on this side here got hooked on the ground and ripped them right out and I I don't remember if I put a splice or if I just had to tie them together. I had to do something so I had lights instantly. So I bought a new wiring kit. And I'd like to wire back except the brakes. I just wanted to do the lights. The brakes work fine. And uh, I think I want to jack it up. See what's under there and see how the wires hook. And get the wires up higher than they are existing. Get them up there where they're protected. I think the side markers work. But if not, I bought a kit that came with taillights and side markers. And I want to put that on. And if these work, what I might do is just add a second one on. I don't know, to brighten this up because it's a long trailer, black in the dark. And then I've got some uh, DOT stickers, silver, white, red. I want to put some of them on there so this is visible at nighttime. Because I park it in the yard and you know move around with a car park you, you can't even see it and uh unless it, you know unless you're using it with the lights on the um plug got a little damage on it i think from that time we kind of had that little wreck but it works fine so i think i'm going to try to tie into this if i can't um, replace the wires in here we might want to solder them but you see this got torn right there and you know I don't want water in there so what I think I'm gonna do first is get it put up on jack stands we're on a slope here and uh, get it so it's safe we'll use the tractor to lift it so I don't have to bring the jack out and the cheating way that I've learned because it's a beaver tails I'll take the tractor bucket with a jack up tilt that down and I'll just about touch the ground, and that'll lift the back end of the trailer up. I'll set my stands, and then I'll tilt this back up and set my stands up here. I can kind of feel it so. 
Enough, I can get my belly under there. They're all four sitting flat. Hi, Tiger. You probably shouldn't go under there until I give it the shake test. Where are you? I'm going to shake it. Here's a better shake test, right? I really like this trailer, though. When I, when I unhook it from the vehicle, it, uh, you don't really need to use the jack because it'll sit there and hover and the tongue will never drop. It's balanced real well. I don't remember what the weight of it is, but if we're on the level, I can move it around by hand a little bit. So the other thing I want to check on is this uh, swivel for axles. I want to, I see a grease fitting on that and that looks pretty rusty. So now, I think it's pretty safe. Let's get working on it. I want to get under there and check that wiring. I want to get a list of what I need compared to what I have. The underneath here, we got a little bit of rust going on. Right here's where the wires are running. See how close they are to the ground? And they got snagged. And so I want to take a look at that and probably get rid of them. And then this goes over to this tail light that's all beat up. But I think if we get rid of the lights here in the back and move them up a little higher, they're going to be protected. And then you see it's got a cross member about every 16 inches. It'd be nice if I could do some, uh, some kind of, I don't know, rust preventative under here. But that's a welded bed to the frame. It's a C-channel frame. And then they got these slots. And here's a broken little piece of web. It's really thin. Where is it? Right there got a little crack in it that's where the ramps go and there's a crack in this one where is it so we can do better you know this don't don't do anything super important but what I was hoping to do is if I don't want ramps on this is I could cut in a recessed a recessed LED light right there and then the light bulbs would be protected so ramps to me are kind of important, but let's see what else is under here. Everything looks pretty good in the back. Up here in the front, the tongue comes through that frame rail and fastens back here, and that looks pretty good. So the frame up front looks pretty good. The wiring harness goes down both sides goes through the frame through a grommet to the brakes. So I think I can leave that alone. And this rust we're looking at here, that's all flaky surface. Be nice if we could sandblast it, but it's not worth it. You know, I'm not looking for that. I think, I don't know, rust reformer or something like that might work on it. I could do some fluid film. I got some of that left. Spray that on. It's black. Um, best way to do that is to flip the trailer upside down. I could do that, but I don't. I don't know if I would do it right now. I want to get these lights going because we got a job where I got to have the uh, the tractor, the three point chipper, the wood splitter, all the chainsaw, everything, and I want 
to have this equipment trailer, what I call equipment trailer work, and it's lighter duty, but see the springs on that. That's a one, two, three, four spring. I bought heavier springs than what was on it. And I gotta remember if these were Dexter. I think they were Dexter torsion axle. No, Dexter, Dexter regular axles. But I'm saying uh, I think they were Dexter brand. And I think when I did the brakes, I think I saw a sticker. <coughs> <coughs> well, so the only thing I don't like is the way the wires are so close to the bottom of the frame. Right there, where is it? Right there. You see, if they had them up in the air, would be better. They probably won't hit in the front, but in the back, when I drag the ground, when I go in the driveway or out, they catch. And... We got to fix that. Anything drooping down like this, I'd like to be able to get this uh, pulled tighter, wrap them up, that kind of stuff. And looking this over, if I'm doing this project, I think I have a jack. This one, you see this is all crazy bent, and we got to jiggle it to work. And it works okay. It's just ugly. I might want to replace that. That's a nice weld on there. It's a lot of grinding. It's going to be hard to get to the bottom. Oh, it's welded down the sides. Um, it'd be nice if I could get the style where I can pop this snap ring off and just place it on there. i got to see. And then uh, I see there's damage on the wire I pointed out. And um, right here on the plug, it's been cracked. So I'm not sure what happened to that. So I think I better put a new plug on. I'm watching this wire comes down through a grommet goes underneath and there's like tape it goes through the frame i'm not sure how far back through that's good because it's protected but i can't see it so i probably ought to get like an eight foot wire and then run it back here and then maybe do a junction box so that it, when i do have trouble with the wiring i can trace it out better than crawling underneath there and figuring it out and uh I don't want to spend a lot on this, but I do want to, if we're going to upgrade it, I might as well upgrade it. And um, I got to get some paint on it because it's getting a little on the ugly side. I hate to grind off my stickers and so on, but the, uh, I don't know where the sticker for the weight class and everything is. I don't remember if this had one or if it fell off. It, it'd be nice to have that. And then if it's got a serial number on it somewhere, I'd like to have that or else maybe I'll engrave it. I have the title. And um, yeah, I just want to get this, everything fixed on it while I can. Hey, we got Lucky out here. She's been rolling in the dirt. Well, you got an idea. It looks like sawdust. Weirdo. All right, so let me go see what I got and we'll see what we can do with this. Um, those boxes, like I said, they got to be ground off in there. They're terrible. And maybe I'll just get new boxes. And like I said, if I moved them up here, it seems like they'd be more protected. And then when you swing the trailer, they won't be catching because this, a lot of times, I'll back on a yard or something, there'll be a tree here. You swing the trailer and you're like, whoa, and you hit the back side of these. So uh, we'll see what happens. Look at my garage sale find. I got these last year. I paid $5 a set. I got four of them. And I got four straps. And they're four inch. They got the hook on them. What a deal. 20 bucks. And I thought I'd put them on this trailer. I know they're really heavy duty. And I even got the handle with it. And... Instead of buying the little D-hooks that I thought about, the weld-ons, I might better use what I've got because I don't know what else I'd use these for. They ju I just couldn't pass it up. And then this style of trailer has that, you know, two-inch lip here. Let me see if I can figure out how I'd want to mount it. But if it was mounted something like that to where it's not sticking over, I could weld here. I could weld here there and um you know we're talking holding lawnmowers and lumber on here so i should be able to get you know a couple thousand pounds out of them and um 
if I put one on the very back, I place one somewhere here right by the fender. I place one up here in front of the fender. And then one maybe either way in the front or just behind the D-ring. Probably not over the D-ring because I might be using them at the same time. But uh, I guess I won't order any D-rings. I might as well use the bad boys I got. What I have to do with the opposite end is when this comes across, this would hook right under here where the ramps go. If I don't put the ramps under there, if I put the ramps there, they'll be in the way. So this lip, it would hook onto something like this. So I would need it facing down. I think if I looked up, you know, tractor trailer, how they hook, they might have a regular bracket. Probably um, is why they're not here is because they're on the truck. But um, this one looks brand new. This one, my, I don't know. They all kind of look brand new. But they got the lock and everything, so... I'm not sure they were ever used. They don't look like they maybe They went on Like that I just don't know if I want to take up room on the bed or if it matters, you know I don't know if I put anything out that far because where these fenders hook on I got bolts and nothing's interfering with them But that one might make sense just sitting them right over that rail and in that case I could probably just weld something straight down to hook on like a good quarter inch piece of steel or something maybe three eighths this is almost three eighths so there's a plus the tail light saga i'm not sure what to do on that yet i've got some uh i think they're called nylites lights i show you but they're plastic i'm a little concerned about plastic stuff on here getting bumped around but if they're in a location where they're not going to get beat on, you know. All right. What I decided to do, guys, was uh, I ordered taillight boxes. I couldn't get them locally. And they're kind of reasonable on Amazon. Everything's China. But what we got is two LED boxes. They look like they're powder coated or anodized whatever you call it but they're weldons they didn't say that i hope i was hoping they had holes in them also but um this one would be the right rear and obviously it looks a lot better than what we got here they are a little bit wider which i don't like but they are slightly narrower than the fender. And what I thought about doing was uh, moving them forward. Still not sure if I want to do that. I think it's safer to have your lights back here. You know, at the full length of the trailer. Even though I got the clearance lights. But um, let's, uh, maybe I'll hold them up there. We'll see what we think. Well, it's super hot out. It's 88 degrees. That's kind of strange for this time of year, but it's in the afternoon. It's starting to cool down. We got about a, maybe a 10 mile an hour breeze, which helps. These lights are going to be so much brighter, but if I mount them back here, they're going to stick out about an inch and a half farther. The box is, a, is quite a bit shorter, you know, two and a half inches shorter. So there might be a chance, maybe, if I change the ends of this, I thought about cutting the trailer off shorter. This light box is part of the rear. Cutting that shorter, taking this arm and just welding it back in. This is just the, uh, you know, the uh, ramp mount. And taking these and sliding them into the frame farther. See how much closer that would be? That would fit. I think yeah that would fit inside the frame and it end up being almost two inches shorter so that would definitely save the the shins from banging on it I thought about mounting them up here 
keeping them below the deck. But I'm not sure if I want them four foot forward because if there's something on the trailer, a person over there can't see this light. You know, in the dark with nothing on the trailer, probably could see it, but visibility is important. I think I think the DOT will allow me to go up there. I saw photos of trailers with the lights way up there, but I'll probably end up sticking to them back here. And that's what I want to do with that. And the second thing that I ordered, remember all this stuff off Amazon is China, but it's, you know, it's reasonable. I think that was $38 for a pair of lights. I did look at Walmart the other day when I was in. I was hoping to get some paint for this. They used to carry Rust-Oleum, it was $28, but they stopped carrying it. So I couldn't get gallons. They had the lights for $17 and something, just the light. And so you multiply that times two and then try to get a box, it's a no-brainer, you know. But on here I got my wiring, and this isn't all of it, but this is a junction box. It goes back. It's the, uh, oh, I dropped something here. Oh, I dropped my, uh, this came in the kit. So I got a new breakaway. That's nice. So that's got the release switch. Pops out and put your brakes on if you get disconnected. And uh, actually, on the uh, dump trailer, the other day I went to pick up some stuff and I pulled in a person's driveway and I went off the state highway and it went up quickly and turned and when I did the chain, the safety chain grabbed on to something on the breakaway pulled the pin out and it stopped me, it skidded and, and I thought oh no, a wheel bearing or something I got all panicky got out and explained to the homeowner you know, sorry for skidding up your driveway and they said don't worry about it and we got tools in the garage to fix it. I walked back and looked it over and the pin pin got pulled out by the chain. So I snapped the pin back in. I'm good to go. This is our junction box. Brakes, right turn, tail light, left turn, back up. Battery and ground. This light, the center is white for backup. I thought that was amazing because when I pull in, even here, not on the job, but right here at nighttime, I can't see what I'm doing. I'm backing up and I'm always saying, hey, can I get somebody to help me back up? I'm hoping that'll shine enough light that I can sort of tell where I am. So I'm kind of curious on that. See if I can get it wired through the truck that way. If not, maybe I could do a uh, little toggle switch and when I get ready to park, flick it on so they're on. Might be a better way to do it rather than rewire the truck any. And then we've got a I don't know. Looks like a place on your trailer to put this. I bet you that's what it is. A storage so this isn't going to get banged up again. I think what happened to this wiring harness, I told you it got a little runaway on the job, which it did. I don't think that's what broke the harness plug there. I think what happened, and you get some grommets too, which is, yeah, they're grommets. That's nice. And a wiring chart was uh, I think moving it around on a job site, I think it got pinched. I think that's what happened. So because I want to change the wiring, because it's got ripped out of this corner, and it's 2003, a couple other spots up through there, it's not too good a shape. I want to replace all that. I want to cut these off. I want to cut this off. I want to bring this bar around. Um, my other choice I think I discussed with you is I wanted to take the original type of recess lights and plug them right here. But I think it's important to me to have the ramps. So I got to have the ramps stow away so I got them with me. And uh, I want to take the fenders off. I want to get the tires uh, off. Probably won't do it yet. But what I want to do is take this trailer and flip it up on its side be nice to flip it upside down but I don't know if I could I don't have the backhoe on the tractor that'll reach higher 
the bucket that'll reach pretty good but i think i can only pull the trailer up on its side and then i can paint the frame i think i want to paint the frame if i'm going to go this far paint the sides get our lights on um maybe i'll paint the bed that's not important but get everything underneath it repaired i gotta weld a couple straps for the uh ramps under here and then uh i want to straighten this back out and i might end up putting another piece of metal on there so when this does bottom on the road we're not hammering on the back of this it's on an additional piece of metal i think i've seen them on something but they they put rollers here and the roller will spin so if it hits the ground it's actually rolling rather than dragging that would be smart on a beaver tail and the fenders they have holes in them i'm not sure if i'm going to fix them or leave them right now fenders you know it's 500 bucks i don't know if i want to spend 500 bucks on a fender you know it'd be nice to have nice looking ones but you know it's not that important as long as it's keeping stones off vehicles so i'll probably get all this junk out of here maybe i'll move the trail in a different location i was originally going to crawl under there and replace the wire but I see other things wrong with it that I want to fix. Let's fix this right. Um, I might be able to flip it up and leave it where it's at. But I don't want to get in my flower bed here. Not much flowers, but I don't want to hurt them. I do want to stay close to the garage so I don't need a lot of air hose. Because I might spray paint it. Um, I bought some uh, black paint. I've got a couple partial gallons of Rust-Oleum there. I've got some hardener if I want to use it. I think on the outside finish, I'd want to use it underneath. I don't care if it dries slow. But uh, I'll get started. I'll get all my mess cleaned up, get this out of here. Might pull that off the jack stands and uh, take the fenders off. Flip it up without the fenders on because they'll get damaged. Let it lay right off this tire, you know. Well, a little breeze picked up. It's 88 degrees. It's pretty hot. Um, so just... I think I'll make this just part one because this is getting long. A lot of these things, you know, people don't know about a trailer. A lot of people know everything about their trailer. So I'm learning. I'm talking myself through it, talking my, my ear, ear off here. But I want to make good decisions on what I want to do. You can see the rusted tongue. We get the salt and the dirt, the stones hammering the front. So I want to probably sand this area and paint it underneath i want to paint the frame probably without cleaning it i'm going to inspect the uh, frame any type of damages i don't think there's anything going on with that um we want to fix the jack which i may have one it makes sense to leave this bracket on i think they're all interchangeable I'll just put a new piece on because it's real hard to set the jack up the battery i believe works fine um the breakaway i think works fine i may not put the new one on because this is fine it's already attached um i don't like the location of it but it's working the uh the wire has a couple tears in it the plug has a break in it and there's no fix to that so i'm going to put a new plug on there's no junction box. I want to put the junction box on so I can access the wiring and test it. We discussed putting hold downs on the side so I can attach objects and lumber, materials, building materials, whatever, pallets. What I do is I go to the building center and I get, I think we've had two pallets of concrete on here. And they'll just set them right on with a fork truck. And then I've got uh, cull packs of lumber, pretty pretty big packs. And I... To, f to clear the fenders, I usually put two pallets down and they'll set it on the third, you know, it'll be the third pallet. Um, the fenders, they need a little work. We're going to take them off. The tires, they got, I don't see them on this side. The other side, I saw a couple little dry cracks. We're not going to do anything with the tires this time, but I do want to do some repairs in here in the fender area. We want to lube the suspension and check that over good. I want to get that make sure that license plate light works if not put a bulb in it do replace it whatever um straighten that plate out looks like i got banged up the bracket on the fender it looks okay on this side missing on the other side we got to do that um 
both tail lights they got to come off they got to go we want to fix that bar which is our ramp uh, hook and then we want to fix the brackets underneath that got banged on the road rip all the wires out except the brake wires they seem to be working fine all four I'm gonna test them but all four brakes um, stop in the dirt and we're going to paint repair flip the trailer up so thank you for watching stay tuned for part two where we're actually going to do something and hopefully stop talking but it's a process for me because i don't know anybody that restores trailers if i took it to a shop a body shop automotive shop it would cost probably thousands to do what i'm talking and i want to spend oh it looks like i'm going to spend somewhere around 150 dollars i think somewhere in that range to what i purchased so far and uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you on part two of actual fixing this